Welcome back troops. This video is about the UK Amateur Radio Licence online exam at foundation level. Basically my experience of it. So recently I took and passed my Amateur Radio Licence in the UK at foundation level. And I think it's worth briefly going through the steps I took and what to expect to help those of you that might be thinking of doing the same. Just a brief look at what is amateur radio. I'm sure you've all heard of CB, Citizens Band, and PMR, Private Mobile Radio. Radios you can go out and buy and use without any training or licensing at all, currently in the UK at least. They have fairly limited range, but are cheap and effective and fantastic for keeping in contact when you're on holiday, rock climbing, travelling in convoy, or generally just messing about. Amateur radio is a little bit more serious. It allows greater frequency ranges to be used, slightly greater power levels, and some limited scope for experimentation. So consequently some knowledge and discipline is required to prevent interference with critical services and to maintain some sort of order on the bands. Remembering these radios are capable of transmitting and receiving worldwide even at foundation level. And you must also remember amateur bands are for communications between licensed amateurs with some very specific exceptions and not for any form of commercial or general broadcast. As with any exam you need to know what you'll be examined on and I guess this is called a syllabus and the place to start is the in the UK at least is the Radio Society of Great Britain and the RSGB represents amateur radio enthusiasts in all aspects of radio in the UK and has been doing this since 1913. And it's through the RSGB that the syllabus of the three stages of the licence, the foundation, which we're talking about here, the intermediate and the full, are set and exams are booked and subsequently invigilated one of the biggest changes to the examination structure which occurred recently, 2019, and that has allowed me to take the exam, was that you can now study and take the exam at home, in my shed. And this is mainly what this video is about. The procedure whereby you take the exam, largely at a date, time and place of your choosing. So, before you get examined, first you need a syllabus to learn. And you can see this syllabus on the RSGB website and they also publish a manual covering everything you need to know for the foundation exam and with manuals for the higher level exams for intermediate and full licence. Due to the changes in the syllabus, it's important you get the up-to-date material, not the pre-2019 material. Then you need to think about how you're going to study. You can go to a club and learn in a classroom type environment. Most clubs run courses through the year and you can find out where your nearest club and contact is through the RSGB website. You could just sit and st study the manual from the RSGB, but I think that would be a very poor way to learn as it would lack any structure or discipline, especially if you're struggling with particular aspects. I did neither of the above. I found an online training course and signed up for free to do a course with Essex Ham, and I'll leave links to that in the description. And the tutor went through each module of the syllabus over a period of a few weeks. There were tests and mock exams at the various stages 
and also the lessons were all there to go through as many times as you liked, online, whatever time suited you best. Not only that, but there was someone to whom you could ask if you needed advice or got a bit stuck. To the actual exam then. You book your online exam through the RSGB. The foundation level costs £32.50 pence at the time of this video and you have a fair degree of choice as to the date and time. There are a number of criteria that you should make sure you can fulfil before you book the exam. It's all explained on the RSGB website and you're pointed to the relevant information from the booking site. So read this carefully, it's most important as I will reveal it caused me the greatest trouble of the whole exercise. So once you've booked your exam the steps go something like this. Firstly the exam can only be taken on a PC or Mac type computer and it must have a microphone and video camera attached so the examiner or invigilator can see and hear you during the exam. This was another big hurdle for me as I had to borrow a laptop running uh, the Windows operating system uh, as I run Linux operating system on my machines which was not supported by one piece of software that you must download and learn prior to the exam. These programs you need to install, two of them, are WebEx and a program called TestReach. And you will be given instructions about TestReach and a login and password before the exam with instructions on how to use it. I had not used either of these two softwares before so if you can I recommend you try and practice them before the exam. In fact I would say it's vital. During the exam you will be required to refer to a document for a number of possible questions. And the document is downloaded from the RSGB website and it's known as EX307. This is the only syllabus material you are to have available during the exam and you need to print a copy out. So if you haven't got a printer you'll have to take a file to somebody who can print it out for you and shops can do this if you don't have a printer. And do not write anything on this document before the exam starts as you will need to show it to the camera back and front all four pages to make sure that you're not cheating. You'll also need to show some photographic ID in the form of something like a passport or a photograph I, uh, driving license. Now a few days before the exam you'll be contacted by the examiner via email to arrange a WebEx meeting. Uh, just to check that everything's working and that you can comply with the exam requirements. So read the notes on the RSGB website entitled Remotely Invigilated Online Exams Candidate Instructions carefully and hopefully everything will go smoothly. If not, as it did not in my case, I found my examiner willing to go out of his way to get things sorted out and we did get things sorted out. So on exam day make sure you set up in good time. You are in a quiet place on your own. You have no helpful syllabus material with you other than the document you're allowed EX307 and your examiner will require require you to do a scan of the room with your camera and he will or she will be watching you and listening to you throughout the exam. 
Now you probably will be taking the exam at the same time as one or more other people so it may take a little while to get sorted so be patient and allow for that time and just follow the instructions of the examiner. You will eventually be told to open the test reach program for which you'll have the login and password and once you begin you have 60 minutes to complete the 26 multiple choice questions way more than enough time if you've studied. In my case once the examiner, examiner had finished Paul the examiner asked me to shut down and give him a ring on the mobile phone and that was so as not to interrupt the other two students who were also taking the exam at the same time as me and let him know how I did because Although he can see you throughout the exam and he knows what question you're working on, he doesn't know what your answers are, are whether you've passed or failed. Uh, now, you take 26, there are 26 multiple choice questions. You need to score at least 19 to pass. So you, however, are told at the end of the exam by the Test Reach programme straight away what your marks are and so whether you have passed or not. So hopefully after you've passed then the next step is to open an account with Ofcom. Ofcom is the Office for Communications in the UK. So you open your account but before you can be assigned a password uh, a call sign to use you have to wait for a large envelope to arrive from the RSGB and that will take one or two days perhaps perhaps a little bit longer depending on the uh, uh, situation of Royal Mail within some reason you get to choose what your M7 call sign will be the three letters after M7 but you'll find a lot of them are already taken so you, you might be a bit limited there or you might have to get Ofcom just to give you a call sign so basically that's it then uh, you've done your studying, you've done your exam, you've got your call sign you can now go ahead and use whatever equipment you've purchased so just a few things I found out uh, about the exam and the first was I found switching from Linux to Windows and using the WebEx and the test reach programs caused me more concern than the actual test itself because I'd done plenty of studying. Uh, now some of that problem was the fact that I used a different email address for my Linux and I chose a different email for my Windows so I had different emails for different things and that caused some problems so try and be consistent throughout with your email address and I have to add a big thanks to Paul my examiner for helping sort this out and get through the hiccups and I guess that, that could be regarded as the uh, as the the practical test because there is no radio practical test as such now now when I did the online course with Essex Ham, I left booking the exam with the RSGB until I'd just about finished the course. But you won't get an exam date closer than about 10 days from the actual time you go on to book. So in the meantime you could start forgetting things or you could start going on to learning the intermediate syllabus uh, which will fill your head full of more complicated things which you don't want for the foundation course so I should have really have booked a little bit earlier than I did also you only get 26 questions in the exam multiple choice questions so you learn a lot more than you end up being examined on Now don't think that it's a waste though because you could have been examined on the things you weren't examined on. Just depends the draw the look of the draw with the questions. But you will need most of that knowledge, especially if you intend to go to progress to intermediate level. So this is just 
One of the many things I've been up to lately, but please don't look to me for answers on radio matters. I'm just at the beginning. Look to the RSGB or your local club for more help on radio matters. Now I wish you all the best and I have an envelope here. Uh, I've, actually I've already opened it, but this is how big the, this is the envelope that comes from the RSGB. And inside it uh, you get the uh, you get the, the I'm not going to show you the certificate uh, because it has information on it I don't want going public but it has your certificate in it a letter in it information about the RSGB and a uh, small magazine in it and so you need that you need that to go back onto the Ofcom site and uh, fill in your account to get allocated your call sign and once you've been allocated your call sign of course then you can open the big box you got from Waters and Stanton and start experimenting with radio for, for real so I just wish you 73s then, a radio term, you'll have to look it up, and especially to Andy Outdoors, <laughs> who led the way, uh, who really did kick this off, and show me uh, 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 the, the opportunity was there to do the exam, because you can now do it at home, uh, I couldn't, couldn't be travelling very far, so that's great, so that's it for now. Uh, <laughs> There might be radio stuff, there might be bushcraft stuff coming, who knows. I'll leave it there then and uh, wish you all 73s.